What's good, people? Coming back with another video. This one, one I've been wanting to talk about for a very, 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 very long time. But let's get into it. So for today, topic, as you can see in the caption, the title, the yada, 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 we're going to talk about why I quit KLLM. Woo! I've been wanting to talk about this for a little minute. Y'all got to let me get out of my system. But anyway, basically... Um, why I love KLM is two different reasons. One is due to the company, and the other one is just completely due to my own personal, you know, trying to grow and try to expand and try to do my own thing. But I'm a for the for the main information that I know people who just want to look for different companies. I'm gonna give that information first. You want to stay to the end and see my own personal reasons why I left. As far as entrepreneurship, you can listen to that. But I'm gonna start with the you know the the facts, the stuff about the company itself. Okay. Starting out, KLLM. It's basically one of those student companies. It's like, you know, so you got Swift, you got KLLM, you got, uh, I think, Stevens Transport. You got all of those type of companies where they always tell you this up front. They'll be like, all right, we'll, they always give you that gimmick of, we'll pay for your school, we'll help you get your CDL, we'll, we'll give you a job after you get your CDL, you guarantee the job, yada, yada, yada. Okay, so, you know, that's great. You know, for me, you know, when I decided to, you know, leave college and I wanted to do something different, I was like, all right, you know, I asked my friend, he told me about KLM. I said, it sounds good. They pay for everything. Uh, they give you, you know, some a cash during school. They give you some cash while you're out on the road. You know, it's free food while you're at the school. Like, who, who can't turn that down? It sounds great. You know what I'm saying? Then you guarantee a job out there. It sounds good. Because at the time, you know, they tell you, no, they give you all these numbers. You talk to a recruiter, they're like, oh, yeah, our drivers make, you know, a thousand plus a week, you know, uh, then there'll be some guys like, yeah, I make 15, 60, didn't make that, but make 15, 60 under, uh, a week. I'm like, oh, that sounds great. Who gonna turn that down? You know, and you think truck driver, you think money. And when you think money, you think, all right, I'm about to, you know, be popping out and stuff. So, you know, so I hop in, you know, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna do it. Call Kayla and them, you know, we get started. We go through the academy, you know, uh, you know, the academy was easy. I mean, as you can, I mean, truth be told, it's not that hard as far as like the uh, classes are concerned the to get the permit because it's just a lot of like coming it's, if you can get a driver's license you almost can get you know the permit it's just a little bit you know some stuff is really specific like the air brake test and all of that and knowing you know how much weight how to do the tandems that's that's a little bit you know you gotta know a little bit thing uh, know a thing here or there but aside from that it's not the hardest thing in the world because some people, as you can see, it's a lot of people that's not the brightest that got their CDLs, truth being told. Now, as far as the driving test, then, yeah, that's something where, you know, you need your, uh, you're either a driver or you're not. Like, yeah, anybody can drive a truck in a straight line, but it's, if you can back it in, all that, that, yada, yada, yada. But anyway, so you, you went through the academy, you know, we got some cash for passing. Then we went through the paid orientation. Then we spent, like, the five weeks with the trainer five, six weeks with the trainer, which in my opinion, should, that's another thing that, that just made Kaylin go downhill. Six weeks on the road with a trainer. Let me rephrase that. Six weeks on the road with somebody I've never met in my entire life. My trainer, he was okay. You know, we got into it one time. One time I was screaming my lungs out of him, trying not to smack the shit out of him. He was driving me crazy. But outside that, we still cool. He caught me every now and again. But anyway, that six weeks with somebody you've never met in your entire life, and if you don't pass that six weeks, you don't get hired. That's stupid because not everybody's a people person. And you, and you got to think about it. You're driving six weeks on the road with somebody you've never met in your entire life. People have different habits of like sleep habits or shower habits or they want to do this. They want to do that. Some people don't, you know, and you tell me some random guy's going to dictate how I am for the next six weeks. Like, you know what I'm saying? That, 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 that's. That's just his own thing. Like, to me, it should just be two weeks. You know what I'm saying? Like, after the, the second week with my trainer, it got to the point where like, I'm not learning anything at this point. Because they, they keep in mind, they think they make a lot of money. For that training, we was only paid $500 a week. That trainer is making money for every mile I make for him. Every single penny, every mile, every, everything. He's making stupid money off of him. Now, I know some students are lazy and don't want to, you know, drive or they're not used to it. But me... Running five, six hundred miles a day, that man was making bank off of me without a doubt in my mind. That man was making so much money. That's why, and I was wondering back then, like, why he always showing on? He got offered to buy me stuff out. He was just happy because I was making him some bread. Had to be. Because when you got a trainer and you're in training, you got a student, 
they make more money off of that. So anyway, but so I passed that, you know what I'm saying? It was good or whatever. Then I started with the actual company with my own truck. Started out for five weeks on the road by myself, you know, just trying to stack up. Cause at this time I was getting ready to move to Texas and I was trying to move to Texas ASAP. So I was like, all right, I'm pushing on the road, stack up some bread. So when I move, I ain't gonna lose no money. I'm just gonna make it boom. So, you know, five, you know, six weeks, it wasn't bad. You know what I'm saying? Like it's OTR trucking, you know, and not every, not everything's their fault. You know, I had some slow shippers here and there, but overall, you know, I was making good money. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, you know, five, every five weeks, I, you know, was averaging about, you know, uh, about around a thousand a week, like they claimed. And I was like, all right, this thing, you know, this is the first real job I had. So this is the biggest check I ever had in my life. So I'm like, you know what? This is great. I'm digging it, a thousand a week. You know, I ain't never seen no numbers like this with my name on the check. Like, you know, someone, I know the highest one was like 1,400 and that was the first week. And then it was like, you know, a thousand, 1,200. There was one week that was slow. I had to do a recent, so it was like 800, but then it went back to a thousand. I was like, all right, I'm digging this. So, you know, I get back home and at this point, uh, my old team driver, that's when he graduated. So we start teaming together. So I'm like, all right, cool. So. We we moved to Texas. He was uh we we got an apartment, you know, split the rent, you know, keep that cost of living down. So I'm like, all right. And then I bought, you know, the Challenger, you know, because I got my first, you know, little big stack of money. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna spend. I'm gonna get some nice. So this is where I start seeing the downsides of KLLM. When we started team driving, you know how I told you at the beginning of the video that they claim that you you know get a thousand a week. This is when I started to realize. You only making money like that when you driving. When you home, you're not getting paid while you home at all. Like you don't get vacation pay. So I'm like, that's the first thing I'm gonna say. To make money with OTR trucking, you have to stay on the road. And that's just OTR trucking in general. You know, if you wanna keep that consistent flowing, you have to stay on the road. So that was like, I was like, all right, at the time when I was so lost 45 cents a mile and when I was, team i was 55 cents a mile on average i was bringing in 1100 around 1100 uh, a week in checks but only the weeks i was driving the weeks um so when i was team driving this is how we was doing we'll be out around two three weeks on a road spend about four five days at home two three weeks on a road four five days at home that's what we was do on the cycle and after a while i start to realize like the monthly like, like I just said, two, three weeks on the road and then probably about a week at home. So if I'm only making 1100 you know, per driven, driven check, I really was only making about 3000 a month. And if you think about it, that's not truck driver money. So, and that's not really just against KLLM. That's more so a lot of these companies, especially student companies that don't pay that much, but a lot of these companies that don't pay that much, and they have strict low TR. That's a lot of, with them because companies like that, you have to stay on the road to stay afloat. Because at this point, I had rent, car note, insurance, which my insurance is crazy high, but um, all that stuff. So you're now having the paper stuff, so you have to stay on the road. So I didn't like the fact that like, because I wanted to be home. You know what I'm saying? I'm in a new state. I, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to enjoy it, but I got to stay on the road to keep that money coming in. I didn't like that. Okay, but that's not really a KLM thing. I'm gonna give y'all that. It's not a KLM thing. It's just these student companies don't pay that much. Um, which is why I switched to the company I'm at now. It, they pay a lot more and they're dedicated. So I'm only spending five, six days out on the road at a time and I'm guaranteed two or three off. But they pay so much and because it's dedicated, I have guaranteed miles. I get a bunch of miles in those few days and I'm getting paid more per mile. I make that consistent money while still being able to be home. So I'm actually able to make what they say I make a week. I'm actually able to make that every week because I drive every week or almost every week. And in those weeks I drive, I make so much money that I can take time off and still be okay because I'm making that much while I'm driving. But anyway, so I'm gonna get, now we're gonna get to the nitty gritty, two reasons I make left KLM. One, they don't give eight. Let me, let me say this nicely. No, fuck that. They don't give a shit about you, period. You are nothing more than a number to them. And I say this because student companies got this. Student companies are not, are, there are not companies that you stay at 
for a long time. This is the best way I can explain it. If I told you I was 45 cents per mile when I started, every year you get a one cent bonus, not bonus, but a one cent raise per mile for every year you stay with them. That means, and your max is five years. So that means after five years, five, five years of trucking, you are now at 50 cents per mile. I am at a company with only six months verified experience and I'm making 70 cents per mile with only six months experience. I'm 23. And there's people that's been driving for five years, 27, 28, 29 years old, only making 50 cents per mile. If you don't see the problem with that and you okay with that, hey, that's you. But me personally, no. 50 cents per mile after five years. And then there's all these companies that only require a one year or two year experience. And they pay more than that. But they tell you, they be like, we care about our drivers, this, that, and the other. But they're not paying you enough to, you know what I'm saying? Like that, that, and then the thing about it is they know people are going to quit. This, and they, one guy said this at orientation. He said, hey, if you can't do it and you got to leave, that's okay. We got about 20 students about to graduate for this next week because they do courses every week. We got 20 students about to graduate next week. It's going to take in your one spot. So they constantly hire everybody that quit. One person that quit, they got five to replace that one person that quit. So I promise you one thing. They don't give a damn about you. They don't give a fuck about you. They could care less because they know after you, they got some people coming back in to fill your spot. And if you want to stay with a company like that, that's on you. But me personally, I'm bigger than a number. That's how I feel. I'm bigger than a number. I ain't going to stay with no company where I know if anything hits the fan or whatever. And then, think about this, they care more about their pockets than people putting them on. When I first started this YouTube channel, there, there are three videos I had to take down because they threatened to fire me if I didn't take them down. I don't work for y'all now, so I'm going to do what I want. Anyway, three videos. One wasn't on YouTube, one was on TikTok. It was when the corona really started getting bad at the peak where all the freight market had stopped, but we were still trucking. That's when all the people were on lockdown, a lot of jobs weren't going unless you were essential. And it was a one minute TikTok of me simply backing a trailer into a dock, promoting truck drivers who are working during COVID. This is what the, the video itself got over a million views, thousands of comments. I mean, thousands of comments hundreds of thousands of likes my best video i ever had on tiktok and it was on there uh if i have it i'll upload it for now you won't see it but anyway so they made me the guy called me this is probably the most disrespectful thing i this is like i said a little bit after i got the challenger so he calls me and it was like the vp of safety and i'm like what the vp of safety what are you calling me for it was like yes sir um call him about the tiktok um first off he, just anyway he was calling about the tiktok and saying hey we can't have that video it's uh you know it's that's that's gonna put the company in trouble and i'm like how's it gonna put the company in trouble he's like sir we just don't want any risk he didn't ask me about none of the comments because this is the thing what he didn't realize the amount of people because at this time i was still okay with caleb and them at this at this time there was thousands and i mean thousands of people in my dms asking me who do you work for who do you drive for how do i get my cdl y'all this is why i started the whole cdl thing promoting it because off of that one video there's people still to this day off of that one video that still are in my messages on instagram now asking me about stuff with the cdl because of that one video and i was telling them all klm 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 work for them work for them klm student company klm they pay this they pay this all this that and the other people in the comments oh my gosh like respect to you you driving that thing good job good it was nothing but positive it was like maybe 10 percent negative comments but majority of it was positive and you tell me to take the video down because you're too scared about what's gonna happen to you when i didn't do i didn't hit nothing in the video it was just me simply backing in nothing was hit flashes on doing everything i was supposed to do that was safe and you're talking about something and this is what made me mad after him explaining this that and the other he was like well you just got a challenger didn't you and I'm like, yeah. First off, that's a weird ass question to ask me if I just got challenged. It was like, well, if I were you, son, is is 
is this the most money you made in your life? I'm, I'm guessing since you got the car. And I'm like, first of all, don't don't hit me with that. This must be the most money you making. This must be the most money you ever made in your life. Don't ever in your life hit me with that bullshit. Because if that, my, if that, that to me is modern day slavery. Don't hit me with that. This is probably the most you ever made in your life. Don't do that shit to me. Don't do that shit to me ever. Because that, that just hit, that just rubs me the wrong way. Don't ever hit me up talking about some, this is the most money you probably, don't, you don't know where I'm from. You don't know where I, don't do that. Don't do that, period. So, like, after that, um, after that, he was like, well, if I were you, man, I think, which one more famous, internet fame or my car? And I'm like, this motherfucker blackmailing me? This motherfucker blackmailing me, talking about it's either me or that car. And I said, you know what? You know what? And he just hung up. And I was like, you know what? I did it. I deleted it. But at that point, that was game over for them. That was game over for them. And I was already plotting my way out. And it was probably about two more months of me struggling to find another company before I never found one. But we're going to talk about, besides that, you know, the whole, they don't look at your number thing. We're going to go to the next thing. Well, like I say, it's like a bunch of people that, it's a bunch of people coming in all the time. Dispatchers. They say, it's sad that everybody in the company always says most people quit because of the dispatchers. Why? Because the dispatchers are that bad. They are they, they are terrible. The, the daytime dispatchers are decent, but the nighttime dispatchers, man, you might as well wait till the next morning. To me, I always say that to my uh, co-driver, the nighttime dispatch dry, job is only to tell you call your dispatcher in the morning. I promise you, I have problems. I'm stuck at this low. I got this. My car is not working. I'm stuck at this truck stop. I'm stuck at this freight thing. This is not sending. That's not sending. My check's not working. All it is, uh, we'll we'll call. Uh, you know, try to see what we could do in the morning. Call your uh, main dispatcher in the morning. Their job wasn't to do nothing but tell me to call my main dispatcher. The amount of nights I was stranded because of that bullshit. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, when big companies like that, I say stay away from them. If you got the money to buy your own CD, or buy it. And if you got, you know, if you got a connection or you want to, you know, go through one of those training uh, academies that don't, they'll give you a job, but you get to pick where. Don't do the ones through a company. Do one of the ones that's like, they just help you get the CDL, you know, for a cheap price or no price at all. And they'll give you options on who to work for. Do that. Do that. Because, man, working for people where they only look at you like a number, man, that ain't it. The dispatching was not it. You know what I'm saying? And this, you know, I'm going to start transitioning into why I, personally I live. Okay. Yes, I understand, you know, jobs like that, you get health benefits, this, that, and the other. But this is the thing. Like I said in my previous video, if you don't make 60 k or more a year trucking, you're with the wrong company. And I stand by that because I believe that just because I've seen it. And yes, it's not easy said and done. It's a lot of, and it's a, it's not as easy done as it is said. And I know you kind of need a little bit of luck and you need connections for that. But this is the thing. This is the thing about that. Okay. So jobs like that, I've never been a fan of jobs that only paying you enough to stay where you at. My goal with trucking from the jump, from the very first moment I left college to drawing trucks, my goal has been to have my own truck and eventually my own company with my name attached to it. And at first it was, it was I could see it. I could see it clearly. I did the math. I ran the numbers, said I can do this. And so I started seeing the fact that you only make money when you stay running i'm like well you probably thinking well just stay running all right i'm big on mental health too you say stay running weeks at a time that's not that's not that's not me man i understand i i that five weeks on the road when it got to week four and five man i was about to go crazy because you stuck in the truck all the time you staring at these two dash lines down the road all the time and you away from your family you away from your friends you away from just you know what I'm saying? That that that's not me, man. That's not. And even that, when you're home, you're not making money, man. This is the thing. Them one of them companies that gonna pay you enough to stay there, but not enough to leave. When I left KLLM, I spent about five weeks without a job. I ain't gonna lie to you. I spent about five weeks without a job, struggling to make that shit meet. But I made that shit happen just because I said I ain't, I ain't gonna stay for them. This ain't gonna cut it. This is not gonna cut it. Now. 
with that being said, yes, you can make a decent living off of that. The average driver at KLLM makes, I think the Google said like 42K a year. One thing said like 38. I'm gonna say that 38 is more accurate than that 42. But you know, they say they make that a year. But keep in mind, that's gross. Before taxes. You a truck driver only making, you know, 30K after taxes. That ain't it, man. And I, I get it. It's hard to get options out there. But this is the thing. If you want the best for you, man, if you don't want to be the owner operator, even then, just, just there are better options out there, man. Uh, I know people make fun of Swift, but for a while I was looking at Swift, and I still get messages from them now. Swift got some good opportunities, man. Swift got some good dedicated lanes. Swift got some good stuff like that. I now mean, people make fun of them, but they do got some good options out there. Same with uh, JB Hunt got some good options out there. I know Snyder has some good options out there. Uh, don't go for Pam. Pam Pam will lie to you. Pam has lied to me about two different jobs. I got hired, but I never showed up. That's the, who it coming out talking about. But like, man, just I I, I would say that it's, that's not it, man. Just that's not. And I only say that just because I know the amount of times I had fear in my heart. You know, being stuck on the road, knowing, and then that's the thing about it too. They they claim these high miles. They claimed that I was gonna get twenty five hundred miles a week, but now I struggled just to get two thousand. I was averaging like only fifteen hundred miles a week. It was a lot of uh, what they call bumping docks, which is basically where you just sitting there waiting for. It was a lot of that, man. Poor dispatching, and then struggling to get home time. They don't take your home time serious. When I switched to, there was an express lane in dallas i switched to that they claim five days on the road two days at home you guarantee 2500 miles a week i said okay i'll do that they did seven to 2500 miles a week it was only if i went out seven days when their advertising is on the road five home too and then that on the road five uh home too wasn't wasn't right either because when i went on the road monday and asked them you know i want to be home that saturday he said no you have to be home that sunday and i'm like that's six days he said no, that's five. And I'm like, you know what? Two weeks later, I quit. You know, I'm like, you know what? All right, cool. That was when that was the Fourth of July weekend. I wanted to be home, wanted to see my family. Couldn't because of this. You know, that's what I'm saying. It's a whole lot of this. And then when I quit, it was like, oh man, you're gonna leave, you gotta, man. And then it was like, come on, man. It's a thing. They claim they care and all this. Cause I drive my good miles, whatever. But man, this is the thing. It. If you in something, this is me personally. If you in something, man, I, I'm not I'm not gonna work for somebody where I feel a trap, where I feel like I can't grow. And with them, I feel like I couldn't grow. Cause like I said, at the end of the day, I want my own truck, I want my own company. You can, I man, you can do it with them, but that shit gonna take you so long, man. And then they gonna try to get you that lease program, that five year lease program. So for five years, you stuck on the road because you have to make them weekly payments. Cause even when you're not driving with that lease payment, they still gonna take that check, that money out of your check every week so if you're not on the road you're not making money people with lease programs barely can stay home my, my trainer was on a lease program he could barely stay home more than two days because i get back on the road to keep that payment going that's a weekly payment with a lease so you stuck on the road i, I said no i'm not doing that. i'm gonna get my own truck cash i'm gonna get my own truck cash to make sure i'm good so i said you know what try it you know this other company this other company that's why i'm that's why i'm here where i'm at now working for who i'm working with now they pay good you know i can stack up with them and then i can get my own truck that's that's the goal but man man even if you like i say even if you're not trying to do no business stuff man you can go to a company that's gonna pay you good there are options out there especially after you get a year or two experience i'll be damned if i got five years of experience when there's the companies they'll pay me 80 90 thousand a year you know what I'm saying? With just two years of experience, anytime I got five and I'm selling for a company only paying me 50 cents a mile, when there's companies that pay me 70 cents per mile, or they'll, I could be home every day and still make 80, 90K a year with home everyday jobs or regional jobs or, you know, teen, all this stuff. There are teen jobs that pay like 110K a year. I've seen the advertisement for it. Not only require a one year, two year experience, they might require a hazmat or, you know, I got my tanker, but they might require a hazmat or doubles and triples. And you're making that much money. Man, this is the thing. If you want to make some real money, do look at the other options, man. If it's not bad to start with a student company. It's not bad to stay with a student company for a year. If you you know if you can stay up for that year, it's not bad to stay with them for a year. But after you get that one year contract complete, man, 
Go somewhere that's going to treat you right. Go somewhere where you're not a number. Work for small companies. Small companies are the ones, when I got a problem in my job now, the guy I call is the guy over the company. It's a small company. I'm talking directly to the boss. I'm talking directly to who is paying for everything. So I'm talking to him. So it ain't no computer saying, press this, talk to this person, press that, talk to that person. Then some guy on the phone being paid minimum wage to tell me to wait till the next day. It ain't none of that, man. Work for small companies or work for companies where you know for a fact you're going to get paid good and paid what you deserve. Period. Period, man. Just know your value. You got a CDL, man. You hauling freight. They don't, man, look at the, you know what, to let you know, look at the load board. Look at how much these people make off of every load you think, after every load you make. Look how much they making if you drive from texas to california look how much that load is from texas to california look how much they making off of that and look how much they giving you you making 100 200 off of a load or 300 400 whatever it may be off of a load that they making two three thousand on look at that look at the numbers work for a company that care more about their drivers than some numbers and profit don't work for mega carriers man you ain't nothing but a number to them Simple as that. Simple as that, man. And I'm going to have to cut this video because I'm getting pissed off just thinking about it. But like I say, man, know your value. If you're trying to hustle and do some entrepreneur stuff, work some companies that are going to pay you good. And even if you're not trying to do that, man, work for, a, like I say, work for a company that treats you like a driver, not like no number, man. I, I emphasize that, man. But Drop a, a comment if what you want to see next. Questions, you know, uh, I'm going to put my Instagram in the uh, description too. But y'all be safe, man. Y'all stay good and uh, happy holidays.